This delicious looking tray of fresh french fries is just like your YouTube videos. And just like your videos, on its own, it's bland. It needs a little bit of salt. That's a lot better. The fries just needed a little salt, just like your videos need a little music to add some flavor. And some of y'all do that, but some of y'all are doing this. Way too much music, way too loud at the wrong moment. And trying to watch those videos is like trying to eat this fry. This is Creator People, I'm Brandon, and in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the why, the when, the which, and the how much of using music in your YouTube videos. And starting with the why, I just kind of illustrated the why. Music is seasoning to your videos. And just like with any spice or herb, it's not just whether or not you use it, but which you use, how much you use, and in what parts of the dish. Well, we've all been to somebody's house who makes some chicken and that chicken has zero flavor and it tastes like rubber because they didn't season it. And we've all watched videos that were a little flat. And you've probably also had the experience of accidentally adding too much salt to something and being overpowered by it, but you still know that your food needs seasoning. So your YouTube videos probably need music, but when do you use it in your videos? Let's talk about using music in the intro, throughout the video, and why you'd use it in which places. In the hook or intro of your video, music is there to set the initial tone. If your video is gonna be exciting and high paced, you wanna come in with some energy. In fact, adding energy is the primary purpose of putting music in the front end. And it's not just having lots of energy, like having loud music or having fast paced music. It's having the right type of energy. Maybe it's bright and happy. Maybe it's fun and adventurous. Maybe your video starts with some really cool B-roll shots of a travel vlog and you need some really hype music to show people how excited you were for the experience. I almost always include some music at the very beginning of my video because it just psychologically causes us to feel more energetic if it's the right type of music. But this really only works if you're doing a hook and not a typical YouTube intro, which I don't recommend doing. See, a hook is about getting people to keep watching your video. An intro is like a thing I do talking about me and that's not offering value to my audience. And this is one of those things that I help people navigate through really in my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. And if you wanna get a free consult to see if the coaching program might be a good fit for you, you can sign up for that at creatorpeople.com and that link will be down in the description box below. You can also use music throughout the entirety of your video. I caution against this most of the time and I break it down into really two options. If your video is super short, I would say under three minutes, and you're able to maintain a pretty good pace and keep some high energy throughout the video, then yeah, you could consider putting music throughout the whole thing. But if it's going to be longer than three minutes, even maybe less, I would consider not doing that. Think about the fact that this is seasoning. You don't want the same flavor profile in a five course meal. You want to taste different things and having the same music track or even the same feel of music is going to get old pretty quick. One thing you can do is if you've got a track of music that's playing in the beginning or for some extended period, either way, that music probably isn't going to be something you use for emphasis. But what you can do is crescendo that music and then drop it and use silence for emphasis instead. And then bring the music back. It can be a great way to add variety to the experience of your audience. But one of the biggest questions I get is, which music should I use? And this is gonna be entirely dependent on the feel of your video. And I really mean that feel, what's the vibe? Like what emotion do you want your audience to come away with at the end of your video? Because think about any talks you've been to, whether it be at a conference or class or church or whatever, somebody's speaking and they're communicating lots of information, but you don't remember all that information. Even just watching a YouTube video, what you remember is the way someone makes you feel. So let's be intentional about that instead of accidental about that because they're gonna come away from your video feeling some kind of way. Do you want it to be bored? Do you want it to be excited? Do you want it to be inspired? What is the emotion you wanna convey with your video? And then look for that kind of music. Now one tool that makes that really easy is the YouTube audio library because in there you can sort by not just genre, but mood. What is the mood? of the music. And there are better resources than the YouTube audio library. If you stick around to the end, I'll tell you where you can find a list of those, but it's a great place to start. And so if you want kind of a fun poppy intro, you might go and search for happy pop tracks that are free on YouTube audio library and download them and try them in your videos. And over time, you'll probably find a few tracks that you like to use, but the fact that you like them actually matters. See, if you don't feel the music, it's going to be obvious. If that music doesn't fit you, it's gonna be apparent to the people watching you and it's gonna feel like something that turns an audience off more than anything else and that's inauthenticity. So if you're picking music, 
it's got to be music that you would enjoy listening to as well, at least in the context of that party video. But be careful because picking the wrong music can be just as bad or worse as just not having music at all. If I'm conveying something really serious and dire, but I've got this goofy clown music playing, that doesn't help anybody. And in the same way, if it's a funny moment in the video and I'm telling a joke, this is not going to get us anywhere. And because it's such an individualized thing, both your taste and the way you come off to your audience, I really encourage you just take the time, dig through some audio libraries and find some things that work for you, but be careful that you use them in the right amount. See the how much of music in your videos is all about volume. Now this is something that people get wrong a lot. I've gotten it wrong. It hurts when I do. A lot of other people get it wrong and you know it when you hear it, but it's harder to prepare for than to react for. I'm going to help you with that. One, I'm going to give you a really simple guideline. This is a guideline. You still have to test it yourself. But in your videos, if you've got talking, a roll, bring your background music down to negative 22 decibels as a starting point. You may need to go up, you may need to go down, but you probably don't need to go up much from there because it's got to pass a three part test to work in your videos. Three parts of that test are headphones, speakers, and grandma. You need to listen to your video in headphones and speakers to know if the audio is gonna sound right in both. So I've got on my desk a pair of speakers here and they should be kind of generic speakers. You can get great reference speakers and that's wonderful if you're doing really high-end professional editing. But most people, if they're listening on speakers, it's like their phone speaker or some cheap computer speakers. So that's okay. But a lot of people are also listening in headphones. So get a decent pair of headphones. They don't even have to be expensive. I'm gonna link a couple options for those, including the ones I use down in the description box below. And if you need a set of headphones or some speakers and you buy these, it actually helps us out, so thanks in advance. But then the more important part is probably actually the grandma test. You may be a grandma, in which case you can do this yourself. If you're not, you need to use your imagination. And here's the question you're gonna ask yourself. If you showed this video to your grandma, could she hear your voice above the music? Would she know what's going on? Would she be able to differentiate you from the background music? Your voice probably needs to be in the neighborhood of negative two to negative five decibels normalized. And if you're curious about how to do that, I'll have a video coming out soon where I'll show more on how to do that. Uh, so make sure you subscribe, but try to get your voice at a higher level, usually 18 to 20 decibels higher than the music. So grandma can hear it. And your audience may not be grandmas, but they might be dudes like me who ruined their hearing in high school and they have a hard time if the music's too loud. So run the three part test, test it in your headphones, test it on speakers, act like a grandma so that you can know the music in your video is salt, not assault. But what if you don't have a big budget for copyright free music for your YouTube videos? Well, I actually made a video showing you my top picks for the best places to get copyright free music that's free for your YouTube videos. So after you click subscribe, go ahead and click here to watch that.